last week on the Cruiserweight Classic. The first round of this illustrious tournament continued as NXT's young OG, Javon Evans, clashed against former champion Akira Tozawa. One of NXT's brightest young stars proved he has what it takes to be among the best, outlasting the veteran and securing his spot in the quarterfinal round. Then, two men who were fighting to not suffer that same heart-wrenching result of last year's tournament competed in a war of attrition, Wesley and Axiom exhausting one another, leaving every ounce of their body and soul inside of the ring. But in the end, the cardiac kid, Wesley was the man getting his hand raised in the squared circle. Now, we look forward to the second half of the first round. Today, TNA wrestling legend, Frankie Kazarian, steps into a WWE ring against the Latino World Order's Joaquin Wilde. Plus, another TNA standout in Jonathan Gresham, Meet SmackDown's Chad Gable in what promises to be a professional wrestling masterclass. Who will be next to advance to the quarterfinals? We find out right here, right now, at the Cruiserweight Classic. It is a crisp 68 degrees here this afternoon in Midtown Manhattan as we welcome you to week three of the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Over the last two weeks, this tournament has commenced. Half of the first round has already been complete. One half of the WWE Tag Team Champions in Dragon Lee will meet Nathan Frazier in the quarterfinals. NXT's Javon Evans meets Wes Lee in the coming weeks, but there is an empty side on the right half. Who is going to make their way to the quarterfinals of the CWC this Sunday afternoon here in Midtown Manhattan? We are not going to have to wait long for those answers. Action is among us. We are live here in New York City. Let's get things underway. The following is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring. Representing the LWO from Chicago, Illinois. Weighing in at 175 pounds. Joaquin. Joaquin Wilde hoping to have better luck than his counterpart in the LWO, Cruz Del Toro, had just a few weeks ago against Dragon Lee. Of course, great respect shown in that result. Cruz Del Toro, actually the one who put in the good word with Rey Mysterio to welcome Dragon Lee into the Latino world order in recent weeks on SmackDown. But Joaquin Wilde looking to have better success, looking to make his way through a fellow veteran of the ring, a TNA legend in Frankie Kazarian. Frankie Kazarian, by all accords, should have been on this stage a long time ago. But here he is, entering a WWE ring, looking to make the most of this opportunity. And his opponent, from California, weighing in at 203 pounds, Frankie Kazarian! Joaquin Wilde, a 20-year veteran. Frankie Kazarian made his debut in this industry even earlier, 1998. He is not some young buck in this industry. Kaz has been around. And talking about TNA, a legend of that franchise. He is a former five-time X Division champion, former three-time tag team champion, and that is just a few of the accolades that he has acquired in that industry. But for the first time, Frankie Kazarian enters a WWE ring one-on-one -on -one with SmackDown's Joaquin Wilde in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Frankie Kazarian usually hovers around that 210, 215 pound mark, had to cut weight to make the 205 pound weight limit for the Cruiserweight Classic. He busted his ass, he made weight, and now here he is in the sold out Hammerstein Ballroom. We are underway here for week three in Midtown Manhattan. Joaquin Wilde from SmackDown, Frankie Kazarian from TNA. Entering that right side of the bracket this week as the second half of the first round commences. Joaquin Wilde looking to be the aggressor in the early going. 
Joaquin Wild made his debut in this industry August the 21st, 2004. 20 year veteran. He has held championships all around the globe, including, excuse me, TNA Wrestling as well. Joaquin Wild off the Acai Moonsault, nearly putting this thing away early. All around the globe, he has been in TNA Wrestling. He is a, also a former TNA X Division Champion as well as Tag Team Champion. Joaquin Wild has covered similar ground as Frankie Kazarian in his years. And now covering the ground of the CWC as he takes things to the air. And in the early going, Wild has exploded on the scene here in Midtown Manhattan. And you harken back to just two weeks ago, Cruz Del Toro, very similar to Joaquin Wild, came out of the gate the aggressor against Dragon Lee in his first round matchup. Unfortunately for Del Toro, they have expended too much energy in the first half of that matchup. Dragon Lee, of course, advancing to the quarterfinals in a few weeks' time. Joaquin Wilde looking to write a different story against TNA legend Frankie Kazarian. Wilde coming out hot in the early go and taking things skyward. Kaz looking to maybe slow down the pace of this matchup. Kazarian, as we mentioned, former five-time TNA X Division champion, a OG of that brand. Made his debut in TNA in 2003, his pro wrestling debut, as we mentioned, in 1998. Kaz has been around the world time and time again on other people's dimes. Now here in a WWE ring, look to make the most success here in the CWC. Crucifix bomb, you see Kaz has a little bit of a height advantage on Joaquin Wilde. Maybe that'll pay him dividends. You know, Kaz just recently, as we mentioned, made that wait for the Cruiserweight Classic, but had a little bit of time to rehydrate. May have put some water weight back on. May actually be entering this matchup technically above 205 pounds. And if that is the case, he may have a bit of a weight advantage over Joaquin Wilde as well in this tournament. Nonetheless, of the size and the strength and the weight, Joaquin Wilde has toppled monsters in the past, and Frankie Kazarian may just be another. Off the spine buster, Kaz, and very much can be a throwback inside of that ring, sprinkled in with a little bit of high offense. Frankie Kazarian in all accords, one of the greatest wrestlers to never hold the TNA World Championship. And even when you look at his resume, he has held championship globe, championship gold, we should say, all around the globe. Kaz has earned his stripes in this industry and is looking to earn his stay here in the WWE. Springboard leg drop. Kaz loves to utilize that flying leg. Sure, it won't be the only time we see him pull it out. Not enough to put Joaquin Wilde away in the early moments, however. Great contest thus far. Wilde tried to dictate the pace in the early going. You see Kaz slowed it down just a bit, but instituted the right high-flying maneuvers at the right moment. Nice counter by Wild. Kaz getting caught. Tilt to whirl off the middle buckle by LWO's Joaquin Wild. Down goes Kaz again. LWO has seen some up and down success in recent weeks. Cruz Del Toro getting knocked out of the CWC by an inevitable member of the Latino World Order. And the newest one at that, Dragon Lee. Of course, Dragon Lee and Rey Mysterio winning back the WWE Tag Team Championship against Angel and Birdo at the season premiere of SmackDown a few weeks ago. Nearly Kaz stealing the victory. Go back to this past Wednesday on Velocity. Rey Mysterio falling short to Andrade last night at Halloween Havoc for No Nation Gaming Channel members. Dragon Lee picking up a singles victory over Andrade. Talk about all that. We talk about the up and down success of the LWO in recent weeks. Joaquin Wild looking to be a successor for the unit. Off the middle rope again with a moonsault. Kaz rolled to the outside and here's Wild hot at his tail going skyward once again. You can't say that Wild isn't holding his own. It's been quite some time since he has been in singles action. Predominantly a tag team wrestler on Thursday Night SmackDown. Going for the frog splash, but there was no water in that pool. Kaz looking to take advantage of the misstep. Sending Wild into the ropes. High hip toss. 
Here's Kaz once again. Now into the ropes. It's another reversal that time. Both men leaving the soles of their boots one higher than the other, but clearly it is showing to be high risk, high reward on this Sunday afternoon. Just when you thought Kaz was going to start building some momentum for himself in this matchup, Joaquin Wilde turning the tables. In her promotional matchup here between SmackDown and TNA Wrestling, I'm sure both men want to do their brands justice. Kaz now... In a high elevated position, DDT by Joaquin Wilde. Manhattan coming unglued. Kaz eats the canvas for Sunday brunch. And Wilde nearly advancing to the quarterfinals, but there is the veteran instincts of Kazarian pulling to be a difference maker. Reaching out, grabbing the ropes, and this matchup will continue. Joaquin Wilde thought he had Kaz down and out, and if he was near away from the ropes, maybe more center of the ring, this one could have been over with. Frankie Kazarian reaching out, holding on, and this matchup gonna progress. Wilde on top, once again, Kaz Sola coming from a mile away. And now on the outside, Tilt the world, Tornado DDT. Frankie Kazarian reading Joaquin Wilde's playbook. Looking to send him, I don't know, I think Kaz is a little bit indecisive here, whether he wants to think, take things back into the ring or maybe break things down into a brawl at ringside. Maybe a naive mistake from the veteran. There's a sidestep there, Kaz sending Wilde back inside the ring. Frankie Kazarian looking to prove his worth. Springboard, disaster kick right to the jawline. Wild may be seeing stars after that. Kaz now bringing Wild into the corner, not by will, but by force. Once again, eats the turnbuckle. Frankie Kazarian has seen his fair share of tough singles bouts over the years. Talk about being a TNA legend, he has not earned that tagline by being just another Joe Schmo on the roster. He has been in there with the best of them, whether it be Christian Cage, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels. Kaz has seen them all, faced them all, probably beaten them all as well. All that work in the TNA brand, and he's looking to ride it into the Cruiserweight Classic. Great series of maneuvers. You saw another springboard leg drop that time, but Joaquin Wild still alive. Wild great a little distance. Poison Rana! You want to talk about striking when the iron's hot? Kaz on spaghetti legs. Paraboots! Knockout blow any day of the week, twice on Sunday. But it's not over yet, as Kaz muscles the shoulder off the canvas. With every fiber of his being, Frankie Kazarian finds a way to survive. Wild thought he had this matchup won. Wild going back to the top as Kaz is looking like a mannequin on the canvas. Hits the frog splash that he was hoping for a few minutes ago. But once again, Frankie Kazarian is still alive. That is the guts. That is the resilience. That is the intestinal fortitude of a man who has been around the globe in that ring and in many others, doing it at the highest level. Spanish fly. Catching Wild when he least expected it. Almost had this matchup done in a hurry. We've got a great one here in the midst of the first round. Who is going to kick off the right side of the bracket with a W? Wild brought to his feet as Kaz is starting to build some momentum here. Wild going for an amusement park ride off that electric chair. Wild may have shown his best hands. Frankie Kazarian looking across the finish line first. Once again, Wild goes down. Kaz is going to the quarterfinals. Frankie Kazarian, 
TNA legend marches into a WWE ring for the very first time. And although Joaquin Wilde gave him hell from bell to bell, Kaz proving his worth, proving even at this stage in his career, he can hang with the best of them. Frankie Kazarian advances to the quarterfinals of the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. After no mercy is shown and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way live on Saturday night, October 19th, from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present WWE Bad Blood. We are less than a week away from going live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday night, October the 19th, from the TD Garden in Boston. It is Bad Blood. And don't forget, the channel member exclusive Bad Blood kickoff show goes live at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, just before Bad Blood is live. And as announced last night at Halloween Havoc, exclusive action coming your way on the Bad Blood Kickoff Show. It is a Tornado Tag Team matchup as the battle for Lucha Libre Supremacy on SmackDown continues. Angel and Birdo contest Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee of the LWO for the WWE Tag Team Titles. And then we get to the main show at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, which of course sees the franchise, John Cena, returning to Boston alongside the United States Champion Carmelo Hayes, as well as Trick Williams. It's a six-man tag team matchup against Imperium, Gunther's first match since SummerSlam in August. Two men who are out to absolutely destroy one another and won't be satisfied until they put the other in a casket and slam the lid shut. It is the Harbinger of Doom carrying Cross, one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Money in the Bank, Braun Breaker. That one is gonna be a fight. Bianca Belair has been on the tail of Cora Jade week in and week out on Raw. She has even pinned the champion in a non-title match. But next Saturday is for all the marbles. The EST looks to get back the gold she lost at SummerSlam as she meets Cora Jade for the women's title. And speaking of Monday Night Raw, their portion of the main event comes your way in a first time in WWE matchup. It is the Second City Saint, CM Punk, contesting the phenomenal AJ Styles one-on-one -on -one for the WWE Championship. Punk lost the gold at no mercy. Can he get it back next Saturday night? It is a matchup that could bring catastrophic injuries to one man or another. It is hell in a cell between the apex predator Randy Orton and the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. These two men have been at each other's throats throughout 2024. They write the final chapter of this blood-written story live next Saturday for the World Heavyweight Title. Can't get enough Universe Mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more Universe than ever before. Become a No Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of Universe Mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how Universe Mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. The first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament will come to a close next Sunday afternoon at 12 noon Eastern Time. The Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne, goes one-on-one -on -one with NXT's Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar. And hot off the heels of retaining his Cruiserweight Championship last night at Halloween Havoc, the big strong boy Tyler Bate 
keeps his promise to defend his gold throughout each and any round he participates in. He meets the Irish Devil, JD McDonough, one-on-one -on -one in the final first round match next Sunday. Tons of history between these two individuals. Will McDonough get the gold back or will Tyler Bate keep the gold and advance in the CWC? We await to see what happens next Sunday, but there is still action on hand live here in Midtown. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 202 pounds, Chad Gable. Chad Gable comes into the Cruiserweight Classic in a very interesting situation. This is a man who has not picked up a singles victory since the month of July. He's been on a bit of a losing streak on Thursday night SmackDown. Gable entering the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, hoping to turn his momentum around in the highest honor. Gable, of course, also eyeing up the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, hoping that Tyler Bate is going to advance next Sunday and continue to defend that Cruiserweight Championship. Inevitably, you could get your chance at the Cruiserweight title if Tyler Bate advances, and if you do as well. Chad Gable hoping to do so this Sunday afternoon. Certainly going to be a tough task for Alpha Academy's head leader. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 180 pounds, Jonathan Graff. Jonathan Gresham, a 19-year veteran in this industry, as you see on your screen, has won six tournaments across independent wrestling throughout his career. That includes CZW, Best of the Best, WXW 16 karat gold in Germany, just to name a few. But he comes in representing TNA Wrestling. Jonathan Gresham, well known as one of the best technical wrestlers around the globe today. And he meets pound for pound, one of the best wrestlers inside the squared circle that WWE has to offer in the midst of the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Chad Gable, of course, a former Olympian, 2004 Minnesota State Wrestling Champion, 2012 U.S. Olympic Trials Champion. These two men know their way around the canvas. Who is going to out-wrestle the other in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament? Very interesting pairing. Another SmackDown versus TNA contest as we continue forward with the first round. Chad Gable, as we mentioned, coming in on a bit of a losing streak. Will that be an effect to his confidence as he looks to get the victory in the early moments here? You want to talk about confidence? I don't think Chad Gable thought he was going to get the victory over Gresham right there. We're just trying to get to the psyche of the TNA representative. Jonathan Gresham, as we mentioned, known to be one of the best technical wrestlers in the world today. Looking to test himself in his first time ever meeting against Chad Gable. Chad Gable coming to this thing with a lack of momentum. Jonathan Gresham coming in, riding a high, representing TNA Wrestling and getting this opportunity. And you gotta believe Gresham feels a little bit more motivated watching Frankie Kazarian move on moments ago in this tournament. Of course, the winner of this matchup will meet Kazarian in just a few weeks time in the quarterfinals. Imagine if we do get a TNA versus TNA matchup in a WWE ring. How historic that could be in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament as Jonathan Gresham showing his agility that time. Gresham may be one of the best technical wrestlers in the world, but make no mistake about it, just as Chad Gable does not mind, willing to leave the soles of his boots if he needs to. Notice Chad Gable leaving his Alpha Academy compadres in the back tonight. No Otis, no Maxine Dupree. As Gable's momentum has been lacking as of late, he is looking to focus on the task at hand. Not be a leader, not be a teacher, just focus on being a winner this Sunday afternoon. Jonathan Gresham beat down the corner momentarily, and Gable going to send him inside and out. Chad Gable, another man who has contested for championship gold throughout this year, has really played into his lack of momentum. Is Gable's chase for gold not going his way on numerous occasions? Just last month, or I should say two months ago, Saturday night's main event in Gable's hometown in Minneapolis. He came up short contesting Carmelo Hayes for the United States Championship. Just one of several losses that is raked up for Master Gable. 
Gresham trying to meet Gable on the outside. Chad Gable, no interest in wrestling this matchup on the outskirts of the ropes. Sidesteps Gresham that time and immediately brings this fight back between them. And down goes Gresham again. I'll tell you, one of Gable's best strong suits inside of that ring is his unique takedowns. We have already seen a couple of them here. And Gable into the German. Going for the pinfall that time. Referee Charles Robinson, little bit out of position. May have gotten a two, but that certainly wasn't going to be a three. Either way, you spin it. Gable, so many suplex variations in his arsenal as well. Jonathan Gresham loves to implore them at times. Should be very interesting to see who is going to be the aggressor when it comes to the suplex situation, if you will, in this contest. So far, it looks like Chad Gable is going to be leading the score. Fisherman Buster that time, or at least a variation of it. So many different suplex variations, as we mentioned. Chad Gable very well may be the modern-day suplex machine, and what better building to showcase that than Hammerstein Ballroom? Gable better not get cocky, better not let his offense in this matchup. And Chad, or I should say Jonathan Gresham's momentary takedown be a confidence boost and therefore a distraction. There you see, taunted to the crowd just for a second. Now, Jonathan Gresham with a suplex of his own, and I think Gable's head might have hit those turnbuckles. You're going to talk about a knockout blow. I don't know if Gresham even meant to deliver those Germans, or I should say that German, into those buckles. But had the strike while the iron was hot, the position was there, and certainly didn't work out for Master Gable. Now Gresham. Already got Gable on the canvas, going to look to meet him there. And Jonathan Gresham, I don't think, is afraid to get into a strict grappling contest with Gable on the canvas. See him imploring this submission hold right now. I think same thing as Gable's early pinfall. Gresham knowing he wasn't going to get the victory, but just trying to, one, get into the psyche of Chad Gable. And also maybe try to weaken the arms and try to take away some of the suplexes. But Gable's showing Gresham it's going to take a hell of a lot more to keep him down. A lot of back and forth offense so far in this first round matchup. Neither man really getting sustained momentum, but there's a belly to belly suplex by Gable, who looks to again be the aggressor. Chad Gable, decorated tag team superstar here in the WWE, Grand Slam tag team champion across Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. He has been on the hunt for singles gold for hell, well over a year here in WWE. Last year, around this time, he was chasing Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship, even going back to last year in this very building at the Cruiserweight Classic 2023 finale. Gable challenged Escobar for that title. It was another unsuccessful outing. Wow, look at that German suplex exploding the hips, and Gresham going for a ride. Inside and out, Gable's looking good. We can talk about the failures of the last year and high stakes situations for Chad Gable all we want, and especially over the last few months on SmackDown, but make no mistake about it. Gable with all the tools to be a success, he just needs to put the pieces together. Gable in firm control has really started to take over this matchup over the last minute and change. Gresham rolling to the outside, trying to create a little distance, get a little R&R. &R. They have been hoping Gable chased after him so we can try to catch him slipping, and that's exactly what happened. Oh, wait a minute. Or maybe it's Gresham who gets caught. Gable, face first goes Jonathan. Into the cover. Will that do it? Not just yet, Jonathan Gresham's still alive. Chad Gable with some great offense in this contest, but not enough to see a three count thus far. Gable looking to keep his foot on the gas pedal. Does not want to allow a rally from Gresham here. Another suplex variation. Gable may not have gotten the three, but he is in firm control of this matchup. You see Jonathan Gresham. He's surviving, but he certainly ain't thriving at the current moment. Chad Gable going to the top. Looks to be calling for the end of this matchup. Going for a head boy, and he got him right in the back of the skull. Gresham looked to be rolling out of the way. Gable leaping far enough to catch him. Unfortunately for Chad, Gresham is still in this contest. 
We have got another good one in the midst of the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Chad Gable, you see momentarily there, look to be racking his brain. Realizes he cannot allow another misstep. Does not want to see yet another loss, especially with the lights on bright this Sunday afternoon. We saw what this tournament did for the likes of Ilya Dragunov last year. Propelled him to becoming one of the faces of Thursday Night SmackDown. That is what all of these superstars are really contesting for. The fame, the glory, etching their name into the annals of history. One of these TNA wrestlers, it could catapult them to not only winning success in WWE, but huge opportunity in the TNA brand as well. Gresham trying to mount a comeback, trying new rally here in Midtown Manhattan. This illustrious tournament has seen many a great stars, and it's two outings yet. But now in its third year, we see TNA wrestlers competing with the likes of SmackDown and NXT and all of these men looking to be known as the best of the best in the cruiserweight division. Exploder into the corner by Gresham. Jonathan Gresham looking good, feeling good, may have Gable rocked. Just as we said about Gable a few minutes ago, Gresham's got to keep his foot on the gas, getting set into the corner. Look at the agility to scale the buckles. Here comes Gresham. Fired up. Down goes Gable. Gable might have shown his best hands throughout this matchup thus far, and Jonathan Gresham may have a window of opportunity here. Gresham, eyes locked. Could be going for that octopus stretch. Has got Chad Gable all kinds of tied up here. A pure pound for pound wrestler is Jonathan Gresham. And Gable's finding himself in a disastrous situation. He'll be on the verge of a tap out, a pass out, a simply I quit. But Gable able to get that submission hole broken. Only to find himself looking up at the lights. And another cover that time, and Chad Gable's still alive. Jonathan Gresham making the ring walk here in Amherstein Ballroom, looking for one of the biggest victories of his illustrious career thus far. Chad Gable looking for the utmost important win to get him back on the right track here in WWE. Crucifix bomb into the pinfall, does not see a three count. A great effort by Jonathan Gresham in the last few moments, but has he now shown his best hands? Has the tide shift? Is Jonathan Gresham expended here? Has he shown all his energy? Gable, couple of shots. What has this American-made superstar got in mind? Belly to belly from the top to the center. Oh, wait a minute. Small package by Gresham. He's going to catch him here. Not to be denied is Chad Gable. Great wherewithal by Gresham, realizing he had the space to execute that inside cradle, middle of the ring. Did not get the three count, but what he did do is get back in the driver's seat. Gresham now with every fiber of his being trying to fight back. Nice drop kick to the outside. Noticed a couple of times throughout this matchup, Chad Gable was not interested in breaking things down to a brawl on the outskirts. Gresham has found himself the aggressor on the outside of the ring a couple of times. However, now it's Gable with a sense of urgency sending Gresham right to the barrier. And right back inside the ring, Chad Gable sends Jonathan Gresham. Gable looking to get this done with no questions about it tonight. He wants the pinfall or he wants the tap out. Wow, look at the strength of Gable. Deadlifting Gresham into that German. You got to give credit where credit's due. Chad Gable, although he has not seen victory yet, is looking like a million bucks as he sends Gresham over the top with another belly-to-belly -belly suplex. And dare I say, it looks like Chad Gable may be interested in a count-out victory here. Gresham's out, at least for the moment. Chad Gable, I don't know if he's going for a count-out or realizes Gresham's probably going to break it, but at least going to take the few moments to get some R&R. 
I'm going to go with the ladder on that one. You saw Gable was ready as soon as Gresham got back inside the ring. There's some veteran instincts by Chad Gable. As Gresham is using all his power just to get back inside the ring. Gable took a couple of moments to get a couple deep breaths. Go back to the drawing board and figure out his next move. And he elects for another suplex. And at this round in the matchup, to see that kind of bridge out of Chad Gable speaks volumes on the cardio, the conditioning of the Alpha Academy's leader. Gresham breaking things up that time. Goes behind and muscles Chad Gable down. That is the technical wherewithal of the octopus himself. Nice knife edge chop now sending Gable into the ropes. Gresham picks the ankle. Gable gonna shove him off. Tried to pull the rug out from underneath of him. Gable not allowing Gresham that satisfaction. Now Chad Gable, you see fatigue starting to play a factor, but he may have one last ditch effort. Chaos Theory by Chad Gable. And that is going to do it. An incredible wrestling match and a great showing by TNA Wrestling standout, Jonathan Gresham. But even one of the best technical wrestlers around the globe today, no match for American-made Alpha Academy leader, Chad Gable. Great performance for Gable to get back on track. And after two more first round matches, we look at the updated bracket. Of course, earlier tonight, Frankie Kazarian defeating Joaquin Wilde. And now we know in just a few weeks time, he meets SmackDown's Chad Gable in the quarter round. We look towards next week as the first round will close out with NXT's Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar, one-on-one -on -one with the Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne. And then, not only is it a first round matchup, but the Cruiserweight Championship of the World is on the line. High stakes, high reward, as the big strong boy Tyler Bate defends the gold against an old rival in the Irish Devil, J.D. McDonough. For three weeks now, the Cruiserweight Classic has taken Midtown Manhattan by storm, and there is still so much more action to come. Chad Gable advances, and we look forward to next week. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday afternoon here in Midtown Manhattan.